plutonium. Plutonium is a radioactive chemical element with symbol PU and atomic number 94. It is an actinide metal of silvery grey appearance that tarnishes when exposed to air, and forms a dull coating when oxidized. The element normally exhibits six allotropes and four oxidation states. It reacts with carbon, halogens, nitrogen, silicon, and hydrogen. When exposed to moist air, it forms oxides and hydrides that can expand the sample up to 70% in volume, which in turn flake off as a powder that is pyrophoric. It is radioactive and can accumulate in bones, which makes the handling of plutonium dangerous. Plutonium was first produced and isolated on December 14, 1940, by a deuteron bombardment of uranium-238 in the 1.5-meter cyclotron at the University of California, Berkeley. First Neptunium-238 was synthesized which subsequently beta decayed to form this new element with atomic number 94 and atomic weight 238. Since uranium had been named after the planet Uranus and Neptunium after the planet Neptune, element 94 was named after Pluto, which at the time was considered to be a planet as well. Wartime secrecy prevented its discovery being announced until 1948. Plutonium is the element with the highest atomic number to occur in nature. Trace quantities arise in natural uranium-238 deposits when U-238 captures neutrons emitted by decay of other U-238 atoms. Plutonium is much more common on Earth since 1945 as a product of neutron capture and beta decay, where some of the neutrons released by the fission process convert uranium-238 nuclei into plutonium-239. Both plutonium-239 and plutonium-241 are fissile, meaning that they can sustain a nuclear chain reaction, leading to applications in nuclear weapons and nuclear reactors. Plutonium-240 exhibits a high rate of spontaneous fission, raising the neutron flux of any sample containing it. The presence of plutonium-240 limits a plutonium sample's usability for weapons or its quality as reactor fuel and the percentage of plutonium-240 determines its grade. Plutonium-238 has a half-life of 88 years and emits alpha particles. It is a heat source in radioisotope thermoelectric generators, which are used to power some spacecraft. Plutonium isotopes are expensive and inconvenient to separate, so particular isotopes are usually manufactured in specialized reactors. Producing plutonium in useful quantities for the first time was a major part of the Manhattan Project during World War II that developed the first atomic bombs. The Fat Man bombs used in the Trinity nuclear test in July 1945, and in the bombing of Nagasaki in August 1945, had plutonium cores. Human radiation experiments studying plutonium were conducted without informed consent, and several criticality accidents, some lethal, occurred after the war. Disposal of plutonium waste from nuclear power plants and dismantled nuclear weapons built during the Cold War is a nuclear proliferation and environmental concern. Other sources of plutonium in the environment are fallout from numerous above-ground nuclear tests, now banned. Plutonium, like most metals, has a bright silvery appearance at first, much like nickel, but it oxidizes very quickly to a dull gray, although yellow and olive green are also reported. At room temperature plutonium is in its alpha form. This, the most common structural form of the element, is about as hard and brittle as gray cast iron unless it is alloyed with other metals to make it soft and ductile. Unlike most metals, it is not a good conductor of heat or electricity. It has a low melting point and an unusually high boiling point. Alpha decay the release of a high-energy helium nucleus, is the most common form of radioactive decay for plutonium. A 5 kg mass of 239 PU contains about 7025125000000000000 black spade 12.5 times 1024 atoms. With a half-life of 24,100 years, about 7013115000000000000 black spade one 1.5 times 1012 of its atoms decay each second by emitting a 5.157 MeV alpha particle. This amounts to 9.68 watts of power. Heat produced by the deceleration of these alpha particles makes it warm to the touch. 
resistivity is a measure of how strongly a material opposes the flow of electric current. The resistivity of plutonium at room temperature is very high for a metal, and it gets even higher with lower temperatures, which is unusual for metals. This trend continues down to 100 K, below which resistivity rapidly decreases for fresh samples. Resistivity then begins to increase with time at around 20 K due to radiation damage, with the rate dictated by the isotopic composition of the sample. Because of self-irradiation, a sample of plutonium fatigues throughout its crystal structure, meaning the ordered arrangement of its atoms becomes disrupted by radiation with time. Self-irradiation can also lead to annealing which counteracts some of the fatigue effects as temperature increases above 100 K. Unlike most materials, plutonium increases in density when it melts, by 2.5%, but the liquid metal exhibits a linear decrease in density with temperature. Near the melting point, the liquid plutonium has very high viscosity and surface tension compared to other metals. Plutonium normally has six allotropes and forms a seventh at high temperature within a limited pressure range. These allotropes, which are different structural modifications or forms of an element, have very similar internal energies but significantly varying densities and crystal structures. This makes plutonium very sensitive to changes in temperature, pressure, or chemistry, and allows for dramatic volume changes following phase transitions from one allotropic form to another. The densities of the different allotropes vary from 16.00 G-CM3 to 19.86 G-CM3. The presence of these many allotropes makes machining plutonium very difficult, as it changes state very readily. For example, the alpha form exists at room temperature in unalloyed plutonium. It has machining characteristics similar to cast iron but changes to the plastic and malleable beta form at slightly higher temperatures. The reasons for the complicated phase diagram are not entirely understood. The alpha form has a low symmetry monoclinic structure, hence its brittleness, strength, compressibility, and poor thermal conductivity. Plutonium in the delta form normally exists in the 310 degrees C to 452 degrees C range but is stable at room temperature when alloyed with a small percentage of gallium, aluminium, or cerium, enhancing workability and allowing it to be welded. The delta form has more typical metallic character, and is roughly as strong and malleable as aluminium. In fission weapons, the explosive shock waves used to compress a plutonium core will also cause a transition from the usual delta phase plutonium to the denser alpha form, significantly helping to achieve supercriticality. The epsilon phase, the highest temperature solid allotrope, exhibits anomalously high atomic self-diffusion compared to other elements. Plutonium is a radioactive actinide metal whose isotope, plutonium-239, is one of the three primary fissile isotopes, plutonium-241 is also highly fissile. To be considered fissile, an isotope's atomic nucleus must be able to break apart or fission when struck by a slow-moving neutron and to release enough additional neutrons to sustain the nuclear chain reaction by splitting further nuclei. Pure plutonium-239 may have a multiplication factor larger than 1, which means that if the metal is present in sufficient quantity and with an appropriate geometry, it can form a critical mass. During fission, a fraction of the nuclear binding energy, which holds a nucleus together, is released as a large amount of electromagnetic and kinetic energy. Fission of a kilogram of plutonium-239 can produce an explosion equivalent to 21,000 tons of TNT. It is this energy that makes plutonium-239 useful in nuclear weapons and reactors. The presence of the isotope plutonium-240 in a sample limits its nuclear bomb potential, as plutonium-240 has a relatively high spontaneous fission rate, raising the background neutron levels and thus increasing the risk of predetonation. Plutonium is identified as either weapons grade, fuel grade, or reactor grade based on the percentage of plutonium-240 that it contains. Weapons grade plutonium contains less than 7% plutonium-240. Fuel grade plutonium contains from 7% to less than 19%, and power reactor grade contains 19% or more plutonium-240. Super-grade plutonium, with less than 4% of plutonium-240, is used in U.S. Navy weapons stored in proximity to ship and submarine crews, 
due to its lower radioactivity. The isotope plutonium-238 is not fissile but can undergo nuclear fission easily with fast neutrons as well as alpha decay. 20 radioactive isotopes of plutonium have been characterized. The longest lived are plutonium-244, with a half-life of 80.8 .8 million years, plutonium-242, with a half-life of 373,300 years, and plutonium-239 with a half-life of 24,110 years. All of the remaining radioactive isotopes have half-lives that are less than 7,000 years. This element also has eight metastable states, though all have half-lives less than one second. The known isotopes of plutonium range in mass number from 228 to 247. The primary decay modes of isotopes with mass numbers lower than the most stable isotope, plutonium-244, are spontaneous fission and alpha emission, mostly forming uranium and neptunium isotopes as decay products. The primary decay mode for isotopes with mass numbers higher than plutonium-244 is beta emission, mostly forming americium isotopes as decay products. Plutonium-241 is the parent isotope of the neptunium decay series, decaying to americium-241 via beta emission. Plutonium-238 and 239 are the most widely synthesized isotopes. Plutonium-239 is synthesized via the following reaction using uranium and neutrons via beta decay with neptunium as an intermediate. Neutrons from the fission of uranium-235 are captured by uranium-238 nuclei to form uranium-239, a beta decay converts a neutron into a proton to form neptunium-239 and another beta decay forms plutonium-239. Agon Bretzker working on the British Tube Alloys project predicted this reaction theoretically in 1940. Plutonium-238 is synthesized by bombarding uranium-238 with deuterons in the following reaction. In this process, a deuteron hitting uranium-238 produces two neutrons and neptunium-238, which spontaneously decays by emitting negative beta particles to form plutonium-238. Plutonium isotopes undergo radioactive decay, which produces decay heat. Different isotopes produce different amounts of heat per mass. The decay heat is usually listed as watt-slash-kilogram, or milliwatt-slash-gram. In larger pieces of plutonium and inadequate heat removal the resulting self-heating may be significant. All isotopes produce weak gamma radiation on decay. At room temperature, pure plutonium is silvery in color but gains a tarnish when oxidized. The element displays four common ionic oxidation states in aqueous solution and one rare one. The color shown by plutonium solutions depends on both the oxidation state and the nature of the acid anion. It is the acid anion that influences the degree of complexing how atoms connect to a central atom of the plutonium species. Additionally, the formal plus 2 oxidation state of plutonium is known in the complex, Cp equals C5H32. Metallic plutonium is produced by reacting plutonium tetrafluoride with barium, calcium, or lithium at 1200 degrees C. It is attacked by acids, oxygen, and steam but not by alkalis and dissolves easily in concentrated hydrochloric, hydroiodic and perchloric acids. Molten metal must be kept in a vacuum or an inert atmosphere to avoid reaction with air. At 135 degrees C the metal will ignite in air and will explode if placed in carbon tetrachloride. Plutonium is a reactive metal. In moist air or moist argon, the metal oxidizes rapidly producing a mixture of oxides and hydrides. If the metal is exposed long enough to a limited amount of water vapor, a powdery surface coating of PuO2 is formed. Also formed is plutonium hydride but an excess of water vapor forms only PuO2. Plutonium shows enormous, and reversible, reaction rates with pure hydrogen, forming plutonium hydride. It also reacts readily with oxygen, forming PuO and PuO2 as well as intermediate oxides, plutonium oxide fills 40% more volume than plutonium metal. The metal reacts with the halogens, giving rise to compounds with the general formula PuX3 where X can be F, Cl, Br, or I and PuF4 is also seen. The following oxyhalides are observed, Pyocl, Pyobr, and PuOI. 
it will react with carbon to form PUC, nitrogen to form PUN and silicon to form PUSI2. Powders of plutonium, its hydrides, and certain oxides like PU203, are pyrophoric, meaning they can ignite spontaneously at ambient temperature and are therefore handled in an inert, dry atmosphere of nitrogen or argon. Bulk plutonium ignites only when heated above 400 degrees C. PU203 spontaneously heats up and transforms into PuO2, which is stable in dry air, but reacts with water vapor when heated. Crucibles used to contain plutonium need to be able to withstand its strongly reducing properties. Refractory metals such as tantalum and tungsten along with the more stable oxides, borides, carbides, nitrides, and silicides can tolerate this. Melting in an electric arc furnace can be used to produce small ingots of the metal without the need for a crucible. Cerium is used as a chemical simulant of plutonium for development of containment, extraction, and other technologies. Plutonium is an element in which the 5F electrons are the transition border between delocalized and localized, it is therefore considered one of the most complex elements. The anomalous behavior of plutonium is caused by its electronic structure. The energy difference between the 6D and 5F subshells is very low. The size of the 5F shell is just enough to allow the electrons to form bonds within the lattice, on the very boundary between localized and bonding behavior. The proximity of energy levels leads to multiple low-energy electron configurations with near-equal energy levels. This leads to competing 5FN7S2 and 5FN16D17S2 configurations, which causes the complexity of its chemical behavior. The highly directional nature of 5F orbitals is responsible for directional covalent bonds in molecules and complexes of plutonium. Plutonium can form alloys and intermediate compounds with most other metals. Exceptions include lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium of the alkali metals, and magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium of the alkaline earth metals, and europium and ytterbium of the rare earth metals. Partial exceptions include the refractory metals chromium, molybdenum, niobium, tantalum, and tungsten, which are soluble in liquid plutonium, but insoluble or only slightly soluble in solid plutonium. Gallium, aluminium, americium, scandium, and cerium can stabilize the delta phase of plutonium for room temperature. Silicon, indium, zinc, and zirconium allow formation of metastable delta state when rapidly cooled. High amounts of hafnium, holmium, and thallium also allows some retention of the delta phase at room temperature. Neptunium is the only element that can stabilize the alpha phase at higher temperatures. Plutonium alloys can be produced by adding a metal to molten plutonium. If the alloying metal is sufficiently reductive, plutonium can be added in the form of oxides or halides. The delta phase plutonium gallium and plutonium aluminium alloys are produced by adding plutonium fluoride to molten gallium or aluminium, which has the advantage of avoiding dealing directly with the highly reactive plutonium metal. Trace amounts of plutonium-238, plutonium-239, plutonium-240, and plutonium-244 can be found in nature. Small traces of plutonium-239, a few parts per trillion, and its decay products are naturally found in some concentrated ores of uranium, such as the natural nuclear fission reactor in Oklo, Gabon. The ratio of plutonium-239 to uranium at the Cigar Lake Mine uranium deposit ranges from 698824000000000000000 black spade 2.4 times 1012 to 698944000000000000000000 black spade 44 times 1012. These trace amounts of 239 PU originate in the following fashion, on rare occasions. 238U undergoes spontaneous fission, and in the process, the nucleus emits one or two free neutrons with some kinetic energy. When one of these neutrons strikes the nucleus of another 238U atom, it is absorbed by the atom, which becomes 239U. With a relatively short half-life, 239U decays to 239NP, which decays into 239PU. Finally, exceedingly small amounts of plutonium-238 attributed to the extremely rare double beta decay of uranium-238, have been found in natural uranium samples. 
Due to its relatively long half-life of about 80 million years, it was suggested that plutonium-244 occurs naturally as a primordial nuclide, but early reports of its detection could not be confirmed. However, its long half-life ensured its circulation across the solar system before its extinction, and indeed, evidence of the spontaneous fission of extinct 244PU has been found in meteorites. The former presence of 244PU in the early solar system has been confirmed, since it manifests itself today as an excess of its daughters, either 232TH or xenon isotopes. The latter are generally more useful, because the chemistries of thorium and plutonium are rather similar and hence an excess of thorium would not be strong evidence that some of it was formed as a plutonium daughter. 244PU has the longest half-life of all transuranic nuclides and is produced only in the R process in supernovae and colliding neutron stars, when nuclei are ejected from these events at high speed to reach Earth. 244PU alone among transuranic nuclides has a long enough half-life to survive the journey and hence tiny traces of live interstellar 244PU have been found in the deep sea floor. Because 240PU also occurs in the decay chain of 244PU, it must thus also be present in secular equilibrium, albeit in even tinier quantities. Minute traces of plutonium are usually found in the human body due to the 550 atmospheric and underwater nuclear tests that have been carried out, and to a small number of major nuclear accidents. Most atmospheric and underwater nuclear testing was stopped by the Limited Test Ban Treaty in 1963, which was signed and ratified by the United States, the United Kingdom, the Soviet Union, and other nations. Continued atmospheric nuclear weapons testing since 1963 by non-treaty nations included those by China, and France. Because it is deliberately manufactured for nuclear weapons and nuclear reactors, Plutonium-239 is the most abundant isotope of plutonium by far. Enrico Fermi and a team of scientists at the University of Rome reported that they had discovered element 94 in 1934. Fermi called the element Hesperium and mentioned it in his Nobel lecture in 1938. The sample was actually a mixture of barium, krypton, and other elements, but this was not known at the time. Nuclear fission was discovered in Germany in 1938 by Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann. The mechanism of fission was then theoretically explained by Lisa Meitner and Otto Frisch. Plutonium was first produced and isolated on December 14, 1940, and chemically identified on February 23, 1941, by Glenn T. Seaborg, Edwin McMillan, Joseph W. Kennedy and Arthur Wall by Deuteron bombardment of uranium in the 60-inch cyclotron at the Berkeley Radiation Laboratory at the University of California, Berkeley. In the 1940 experiment, Neptunium-238 was created directly by the bombardment but decayed by beta emission with a half-life of a little over two days, which indicated the formation of element 94. A paper documenting the discovery was prepared by the team and sent to the journal Physical Review in March 1941 but publication was delayed until a year after the end of World War II due to security concerns. At the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge, Agon Bretzker and Norman Feather realized that a slow neutron reactor fueled with uranium would theoretically produce substantial amounts of plutonium-239 as a byproduct. They calculated that element 94 would be fissile, and had the added advantage of being chemically different from uranium, and could easily be separated from it. Macmillan had recently named the first transuranic element Neptunium after the planet Neptune, and suggested that element 94, being the next element in the series, be named for what was then considered the next planet, Pluto. Nicholas Kemmer of the Cambridge team independently proposed the same name, based on the same reasoning as the Berkeley team. Seaborg originally considered the name Plutium, but later thought that it did not sound as good as Plutonium. He chose the letters PU as a joke, in reference to the interjection PU to indicate an especially disgusting smell, which passed without notice into the periodic table. Alternative names considered by Seaborg and others were Ultimium or Extremium because of the erroneous belief that they had found the last possible element on the periodic table. The chemistry of plutonium was found to resemble uranium after a few months of initial study. Early research was continued at the Secret Metallurgical Laboratory of the University of Chicago. 
On August 20, 1942, a trace quantity of this element was isolated and measured for the first time. About 50 micrograms of plutonium-239 combined with uranium and fission products was produced and only about 1 microgram was isolated. This procedure enabled chemists to determine the new element's atomic weight. On December 2, 1942, on a racket court under the West Grandstand at the University of Chicago's Stagg Field, researchers headed by Enrico Fermi achieved the first self-sustaining chain reaction in a graphite and uranium pile known as CP1. Using theoretical information garnered from the operation of CP1, DuPont constructed an air-cooled experimental production reactor, known as X-10, and a pilot chemical separation facility at Oak Ridge. The separation facility, using methods developed by Glenn T. Seaborg and a team of researchers at the Met Lab, removed plutonium from uranium irradiated in the X-10 reactor. Information from CP-1 was also useful to Met Lab scientists designing the water-cooled plutonium production reactors for Hanford. Construction at the site began in mid-1943. In November 1943 some plutonium trifluoride was reduced to create the first sample of plutonium metal, a few micrograms of metallic beads. Enough plutonium was produced to make it the first synthetically made element to be visible with the unaided eye. The nuclear properties of plutonium-239 were also studied, researchers found that when it is hit by a neutron it breaks apart by releasing more neutrons and energy. These neutrons can hit other atoms of plutonium-239 and so on in an exponentially fast chain reaction. This can result in an explosion large enough to destroy a city if enough of the isotope is concentrated to form a critical mass. During the early stages of research, animals were used to study the effects of radioactive substances on health. These studies began in 1944 at the University of California at Berkeley's Radiation Laboratory and were conducted by Joseph G. Hamilton. Hamilton was looking to answer questions about how plutonium would vary in the body depending on exposure mode, retention rates, and how plutonium would be fixed in tissues and distributed among the various organs. Hamilton started administering soluble microgram portions of plutonium-239 compounds to rats using different valence states and different methods of introducing the plutonium. Eventually, the lab at Chicago also conducted its own plutonium injection experiments using different animals such as mice, rabbits, fish, and even dogs. The results of the studies at Berkeley and Chicago showed that plutonium's physiological behavior differed significantly from that of radium. The most alarming result was that there was significant deposition of plutonium in the liver and in the actively metabolizing portion of bone. Furthermore, the rate of plutonium elimination in the excreta differed between species of animals by as much as a factor of five. Such variation made it extremely difficult to estimate what the rate would be for human beings. During World War II the US government established the Manhattan Project, which was tasked with developing an atomic bomb. The three primary research and production sites of the project were the plutonium production facility at what is now the Hanford site, the uranium enrichment facilities at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and the Weapons Research and Design Laboratory, now known as Los Alamos National Laboratory. The first production reactor that made plutonium-239 was the X-10 graphite reactor. It went online in 1943 and was built at a facility in Oak Ridge that later became the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. In January 1944, workers laid the foundations for the first chemical separation building, T plant located in 200 West. Both the T plant and its sister facility in 200 West, the U plant, were completed by October. The separation building in 200 East, B plant, was completed in February 1945. The second facility planned for 200 East was cancelled. Nicknamed Queen Mary's by the workers who built them, the separation buildings were awesome canyon-like structures 800 feet long, 65 feet wide, and 80 feet high containing 40 process pools. The interior had an eerie quality as operators behind 7 feet of concrete shielding manipulated remote control equipment by looking through television monitors and periscopes from an upper gallery. Even with massive concrete lids on the process pools, precautions against radiation exposure were necessary and influenced all aspects of plant design. On April 5, 
1944, Emilio Segre at Los Alamos received the first sample of reactor-produced plutonium from Oak Ridge. Within 10 days, he discovered that reactor-bred plutonium had a higher concentration of the isotope plutonium-240 than cyclotron-produced plutonium. Plutonium-240 has a high spontaneous fission rate, raising the overall background neutron level of the plutonium sample. The original gun-type plutonium weapon, codenamed Thin Man, had to be abandoned as a result the increased number of spontaneous neutrons meant that nuclear pre-detonation was likely. The entire plutonium weapon design effort at Los Alamos was soon changed to the more complicated implosion device, codenamed Fat Man. With an implosion weapon, plutonium is compressed to a high density with explosive lenses a technically more daunting task than the simple gun-type design, but necessary to use plutonium for weapons purposes. Enriched uranium, by contrast, can be used with either method. Construction of the Hanford B reactor the first industrial-sized nuclear reactor for the purposes of material production, was completed in March 1945. The reactor produced the fissile material for the plutonium weapons used during World War II. B, D, and F were the initial reactors built at Hanford, and six additional plutonium-producing reactors were built later at the site. By the end of January 1945, the highly purified plutonium underwent further concentration in the completed chemical isolation building, where remaining impurities were removed successfully. Los Alamos received its first plutonium from Hanford on February 2. While it was still by no means clear that enough plutonium could be produced for use in bombs by the war's end, Hanford was by early 1945 in operation. Only two years had passed since Colonel Franklin Mathias first set up his temporary headquarters on the banks of the Columbia River. According to Kate Brown, the plutonium production plants at Hanford and Mayak in Russia, over a period of four decades, both released more than 200 million curies of radioactive isotopes into the surrounding environment twice the amount expelled in the Chernobyl disaster in each instance. Most of this radioactive contamination over the years were part of normal operations, but unforeseen accidents did occur and plant management kept this secret, as the pollution continued unabated. In 2004, a safe was discovered during excavations of a burial trench at the Hanford nuclear site. Inside the safe were various items, including a large glass bottle containing a whitish slurry which was subsequently identified as the oldest sample of weapons-grade plutonium known to exist. Isotope analysis by Pacific Northwest National Laboratory indicated that the plutonium in the bottle was manufactured in the X-10 graphite reactor at Oak Ridge during 1944. The first atomic bomb test, codenamed Trinity and detonated on July 16, 1945, near Alamogordo, New Mexico used plutonium as its fissile material. The implosion design of the gadget, as the Trinity device was codenamed, used conventional explosive lenses to compress a sphere of plutonium into a supercritical mass, which was simultaneously showered with neutrons from the urchin, an initiator made of polonium and beryllium reaction. Together, these ensured a runaway chain reaction and explosion. The overall weapon weighed over 4 tons although it used just 6.2 kg of plutonium in its core. About 20% of the plutonium used in the Trinity weapon underwent fission, resulting in an explosion with an energy equivalent to approximately 20,000 tons of TNT. An identical design was used in the Fat Man atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki, Japan, on August 9, 1945 killing 35,0040,000 people and destroying 68% 80% of war production at Nagasaki. Only after the announcement of the first atomic bombs was the existence and name of plutonium made known to the public by the Manhattan Project's Smith Report. Large stockpiles of weapons-grade plutonium were built up by both the Soviet Union and the United States. 